Hey, what's up YouTube? In today's short video, I'm going to talk about a mathematical tool, something quite niche. You definitely won't have a daily use for this in an Unreal Engine, but who knows. It's something I struggle a lot with, and it's not so widely documented, so I thought, eh, why not make a quick video about it? So you've read the title, I'm going to talk about two things actually, best fitting Bezier curve and gradient descent. And a word of caution, I definitely have no background in mathematics, so I might overstate and simplify things here and there, okay? But let me first explain what led me to those two very specific topics. In my latest video, I showcased a tool that allows me to bake Gerstner waves of sets into a flipbook, amongst other things, right? It's something I also showed in an earlier video, I made a tutorial explaining how to use Blender to bake an NFT ocean simulation into a flipbook. However, I was only able to extract very little information out of that Blender FFT simulation, and one of the reasons I built that tool in Unreal Engine was to see if I could easily bake flow maps to way more smoothly interpolate frames. You see, as of now, I rely on linear interpolation to blend those flipbook frames, right? The thing is, well, you can only do so much with linear interpolation. You need quite a few frames to have enough mm, animation data, and even then slow down time enough and it starts to fall apart. You can very easily pinpoint where the frame transition happens, right? There's a sudden change in motion, and it's quite apparent that things quote-unquote move in a straight line at a fixed rate from frame to frame. So what I tried with this tool was to compute offsets at a given frame, then compute offsets for the next frame, and based on the delta time, derive some sort of velocity that I could then convert into a flow map once normalized. And the idea was that using flow-based interpolation, or motion vectors, or whatever you want to call it, I would be able to way more smoothly blend those flipbook frames, and possibly even be able to bake fewer frames. Which uh, didn't really work, because it turns out that the wrong approach for this particular case. And I can't thank enough Desray for the help he very kindly provided. He was able to point me in the right direction, and he provided me with very helpful feedback, so shout out to him, and feel free to check out his awesome Niagara FFT water simulation he released for free. Anyway, why is Flowmap the wrong approach? Well, the way I see this, and I can't stress this enough, this is my own interpretation, and it might not be entirely accurate, right? A flow map is only really useful to help smooth out the interpolation of a flipbook where there's advection, like say an explosion. Because a flow map relies on optical flow, and if I'm correct, most optical flow algorithms assume pixels from frame to frame are almost identical value-wise, as they move in texture space by some small-ish amount. So for a given pixel, that optical flow algorithm searches all around it in the next frame and try and see where it ends up to derive a 2D direction. And here, although it looks like offsets are moving in space, well, actually that's not really what's happening, and it's even kind of the opposite. The way I see it, those offsets do not move in texture space, but they drastically change value with time. So given a single pixel, what happens is, with all these flipbook frames, I get a list of XYZ offsets, kinda like the keyframes of an animation, right? So a flow map isn't the way to go, because I'm not looking to compute where, say, that offset next ends up in the texture, because really that value doesn't move in texture space. Rather, I'm looking to see how it changes value from frame to frame. And if I draw these offsets in 3D space, I get that kind of path. This is a visualization of the three-dimensional offset at a single pixel in that looping flipbook containing 64 frames, which resembles an animation path, right? And if you're familiar with animations, well, the common approach to smooth out motion in between keyframes is to use Bezier curves. So the goal here is to subsample offsets in between, say, those two frames at a regular interval to have a grasp on what the original motion looked like. Then, based on those subsamples, the goal is to find the Bezier curve that best fits those points. In other words, find the Bezier curve that best describes how that offset here changes through time to quote-unquote become that one. And once that curve is found, bake this XYZ tangent into a flipbook, and this one as well. And voila! Now, instead of using a simple linear interpolation, Using this formula, I could sample a Bezier curve to create a much more intricate interpolation that should be way smoother, and also potentially need fewer frames in that flipbook and thus increase its resolution and thus have more pixels per frame. And a similar principle could be used for vertex animation, right? You know, that technique to break vertices XYZ position in a texture? Well, you could also store tangents and have a much more intricate animation and thus bake way fewer positions. 
Now, in this video, I'm not going to show how to do that, because I've yet to reach that step myself, but I'm making progress, because I've a key part of this program figured out, which is the topic of today's video, which is, well, I have a bunch of subsamples, and I'm looking to find the best fitting Bezier curve. So, where to begin? Well, and again, shout out to Deathray for his help on this, you could first try an extremely naive approach, meaning try two random tangents a large number of times and see how it goes and keep the best ones. And that's exactly what I've done here. This blueprint ticks every quarter of a second and each tick I try two new random tangent points. Then I loop through all these what I call data points and compare how distant those are to the Bezier curve, sum the square distance and that's the overall score. And if that score is closer to zero than the previous attempt, then cool, those new randomly picked tangents are better fit to describe Bezier curve that more closely goes through all these data points. Cool, so let's see that in action. Huh, it's quite slow, so let's shift gear and have this tick every single frame. Better, but then why not do, say, 100 attempts per tick? Cool, so that method eventually finds two tangents that create a Bezier curve that somewhat goes through these data points. But see, it takes so many tries, and it also depends on the way you generate random tangents. You could, by mistake, prevent the best tangents to be found, because you have to come up with a way to randomly pick tangents yourself, like come up with a range of directions and distances to try, if that makes sense. Thus, it's quite a dumb brute force approach. So is there a way to do something similar, but make much, much better educated guesses? Well, yes, that's what you may call function optimization. It's a very, very broad and interesting topic. The most simple and known algorithm is one called gradient descent. You might have heard it if you're familiar with how AIs are trained. Now, I'm not going into too much details here, because this video, for instance, does a much better job at explaining this in great details than I ever could, so give that one a watch. To summarize though, I have some kind of objective function here, which outputs a score based on how good that Bezier curve fits my data points, right? And I'm essentially trying to reduce that score as much as possible, but I don't know how. And assuming I have a very simple objective function, which takes just one parameter and outputs values that look like this, given an initial score, I take the tiniest step forward and compute a new score, that way I can numerically compute the gradient. And that lets me know in which direction to make my next guess, and so I go down that slope by some arbitrary amount. Rinse and repeat, and you eventually reach zero, and the name gradient descent. Okay, now this looks simple, but here I have a six-dimensional problem. Why six? Well, the quote-unquote parameters I can play with are those two tangents x, y, z components. So three components times two. So what's the solution? Well, you process one dimension at a time. So let's assume I start with that first tangent's x component. See here, xyz components are simply split and stored individually into an array of floats. So the first float is that x component. So for that x component, first compute the score with that x component as is, then nudge that x component by a tiny amount and compute the score again, and that gets me the derivative, right? That gradient. And so having that gradient for the next guess, nudge that x component by an arbitrary amount to go down that slope and lead to a better score. Rinse and repeat for all components, and very quickly and efficiently, within just a dozen tries or so, you find tangents that create a basic curve that best goes through those data points. Finally, store these two tangents, and then, instead of a simple linear interpolation, you can now use a cubic Bezier curve to interpolate those two points, and almost exactly replicate the initial motion. Neat. Now, a cubic Bezier curve is neat, but it requires two tangents, and that may be too much data to store still. The thing is that gradient descent method is so elegant and simple, it's actually super easy to apply to anything really, like say, find the best fitting quadratic curve. It's like a simpler version of a cubic Bezier curve, right? It has only one single control point instead of two. So same principle, this time I only have three parameters to play with, and the objective function is almost identical, except that I of course sample a quadratic curve instead of a cubic one. Voila, that's it for today's video, I hope you learned something. Files are available for free on my Patreon, feel free to join in if you want to support me and see more content like this. Also, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your support, I'll see you in the next video, take care of yourself, bye bye!